So everyone who's tuning in, thanks so much. Uh, we have a very special treat. We have the one and only Howie Weinberg. Uh, I would read the list of his credits, but we'd be here all day. So some highlights would be Nirvana, Smashing Pumpkins, Public Enemy, Daft Punk, Crystal Method, Gary Clark Jr. Which by the way, <laughs> congratulations on the Grammys. Thank you. Gary man. Clark. Uh, Anthrax, Herbie Hancock. Uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers Rush. I mean, the list is just, it's literally my entire <laughs> formative musical education was mastered by you. <laughs> so th this is a, this is pretty awesome. Well, it's pretty awesome being here with you guys because, you know, this is, we're, we're, the, we're in the future here and now we're all at home here. So, you know, hey, I know. this is it. I mean, this is what we always wanted, right? To just stay at home and make music, right? Yeah. And here we are. Never leave was, the house. Just eat a lot of food, yeah. you know, get chat with everybody and, uh, and you know, rock out, man. And just as long as you don't have neighbors or little kids, you're good. <laughs> yeah, little kids, they, they can eat up the time. We were promised silver jumpsuits in the future. And, okay. you know, I got my grandpa sweater, so that didn't well, come true. Maybe all we need now is just quicker internet. Yeah, I think for this. 5G, it's right around the corner. That's really not our biggest problem anyway. <laughs> <laughs> all right now. Okay. Uh, so, all right. So, I mean, uh, I guess to get started, if you want to tell us how you got started. Um, how many, can it, can, does it really show who's watching or anything? Can you, you, you as the, uh, as the, uh, um, as the, uh, um, the no uh, idea. Oh, you don't, you have no idea either, right? No, I'm. Uh, okay, how do you find? You, there's no way to find out either. All right, that's okay. Flying blind a little bit here. Huh? I'm flying blind a little bit. Okay, that's fine. Um, yeah. We just no nudity. That's that's the only rule. No, we're okay here, but um, um, hang on, just hang on. Let me. So anyway, um, uh, hang on, let me, um. um Oh, yeah. um, uh, uh, you all right on your end? Yes, um, I'm just checking something. All right, yeah, um, we're, we're rolling. We're rolling. Everyone's watching us. Okay, anyway, I'm Howie Weinberg. I am, I am uh, the master of the masters, okay, and um. <laughs> We're going to give you some really good insights on how to do this at home now, because that's where we all are. I would hope you're not out at a Starbucks or a uh, Chuck E. Cheese or something. Uh, um, anyway, this is my this is my studio here. It's pretty uh, pretty badass, you know. It is home studio. Um, you get the idea. I have many home many home studio technically because it's in your home. Many 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 tools here. Let okay, I me. Mean, I can open up my. I got a little pro tool set up here too. I, I like having every dog we can get. Uh, I like the Reaper that you guys use. It's fantastic. I use a Pyramix, a Merging, a Sequoia, uh, whatever the, you know, whatever you got. I mean, they all suck and they're all great, you know. Uh, but um, it's really not about the, uh, uh, you know, it's not. It's never about the equipment ever. So let's make this first and foremost. It's about skills, not about equipment. Equipment is really good, and equipment really helps skills get better. But um, first and foremost, it's about skills and not equipment. And um, 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 we can probably start. And, and if, if, is it easier to start just you know lecturing and and like um, I mean I have a bunch of things I can you know the way I got started in mastering I, I started that in. You know, probably a lot of the way before a lot of you guys were born, but it was the old studio system where you um you got a job as a maybe a messenger as or as a and in Britain they called them tea boys. Yeah. And uh, they were basically um guys who made tea. And um one of my favorite stories is a producer named Flood, who was, you know, one of the top producers in the world, done some big major records, you two. Yeah. Done some uh, um um, um, just some big ass records, pumpkins, all that. He got his nickname Flood as the guy who just 
made so much tea, he flooded everybody. Everybody had to go to the bathroom and flood the bathroom from from being such a tea boy. Oh dear, so, that's in America here. I don't know dark. how they in Canada, but um, uh, <laughs> you know, you want to work in a studio in those days. You didn't go to some fancy recording school because the, the the word on the street was the recording school sucked. They didn't suck. They um, they really they didn't teach you real world knowledge of yeah. um. Did, did um, they? They actually had like recording schools back then, you know. Excuse I, me, they had there was a couple. There was one in New York, uh, and NYU Institute of Audio Research, where they they taught disc cutting, you know, and disc mastering, and you know, because basically when I started, and I'm not even that old, it, it, you know, our, our our format was vinyl and cassettes. Cassettes really came about because um, uh, um, you know, we needed something to play in a car, okay, and um. Was it cassettes had, back then or eight tracks? Eight, well, eight tracks too, but eight tracks just generally sucked. Yeah. Because it was quarter inch tape. It, it, I mean, I don't know how many eight tracks I ever got. I pulled out of the car and like and the tape would be going like this. And it's like, yeah. oh man, you know? Anyway, but they had a decent sound quality because it was actually, um, it was real analog tape and it was real, uh, it was a three and three quarters speed and, and it sounded good. The only problem was, and this was a major problem, okay, um, you can only get a certain amount of minutes on each, on each, uh, uh, each a track. So there's four tracks, two tracks each way. So uh, a lot of times in the middle of a song, if it, if it gets to the end of the song and it's, you know, you have a 15 minute song or a 10 minute song, the engineer, I remember, it, you would have to fade it out. So that the, the like eight track song had to fade out? right in the middle of a song. <laughs> So it could get to the next track. It's like the accidental radio edit. <laughs> you know, it, but it worked. And, uh, and you know, to this day, each tracks are like, you know, what what were they thinking, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so then cassettes took over and they that became the major format for many years. And they sounded, you know, the thing I, I am, I um, I love to say about a cassette is it's indestructible. You can take that cassette throw it on your dashboard, go to the beach, leave it in the sun, take it out, put it in, push play. And you, you may hear a little, you know, lack of high end. You turn the treble all the way up, the bass up, and, and you're rocking, and it works, you know? Yeah. Try doing that with a CD, you know? I mean, you know, in, in those days, so you leave it on your, you know, it'll, it, it, would, it, would, it would destruct. Yeah, it was so definitely it a more have, forgiving medium. Was, I know something about a tape that, whatever it was, you hold it in your hand. Uh, you can feel the tape. You can put it out, splice yeah. it out. You know, cut it up. Do it. You know, rewind anyway, it with so a pencil. Anyway, that that was my first introduction to the record business in the in the early eighties. It was okay. it was a, a vinyl records, which uh, in those days, um, the, the the technology of vinyl records and the technology of recording were really on the same level because that was the days eighties where there was a big ass, big sounding Neve, SSL started making consoles. There was some great sounding records, big and warm. And the, in the vinyl, you know, whatever the technology was still from the fifties. Okay, so we're having all this new recording technology and the vinyl technology, it still was from the fifties. And it, it's not something that could be upgraded. A little bit here and there, they, I could get into that in another point in time where they had something called direct metal mastering, but uh, I don't. You, ever, you remember that, Al? Do you any, remember I don't. anything about that? No, I was in diapers, probably. Well, it, it, it didn't matter, but it, it was trying to save the record industry, where instead of, um, you know, like like I, you know, like when you make a copy of analog something, the more copies you make along the way, the worse it's going to sound. Yeah. The direct metal mastering basically took when you when you cut a piece of vinyl, when you actually it, it cut it into metal instead of a lacquer. Oh, so it was, was it almost like a stamper for CDs? Like yeah, exactly. you're stamping the vinyl? You're making the first stamper immediately. Okay. Okay, so you've eliminated three processes along the way, two to three processes along the way. So, and so obviously it's going to sound better. And it, it actually did. Some of the, if, if you can ever find any records out there that were, you know, quote unquote DMM technology, they, they, they were putting stickers on them for years. And um, I mean, I'm just giving you a bit of a history of, of the mastering world and it, it seemed to be pretty good you could cut longer you could put more time per side on that and get a little bitter bottom and 
it was, you know, he had to buy a lot of extra equipment, but it, it, people seemed to pay because records were just flying off shelves. Yeah, they, yeah. And it was a heyday of selling, you know. And this was even before digital or the internet. <laughs> or internet, we've heard about something like that. Anyway, um, I mean, so anyways, I started, basically I, I started, the, re the way I cut my teeth was I would, um, I kind of, um, Bob Ludwig was my mentor and my daddy in the business. He, he kind of, you know, I, I was basically the world's best messenger boy. And he, you know, he, he came up to me, he goes, you know, I think I'm going to make the, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I think you're the next in line. I'm going to teach you stuff. So he said, you know, so they taught me how to make tape copies and, 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 you know, a little ancillary because everything was analog. You know, you'd have to learn what analog was and digital was just a, you know, some kind of blur. Anyway, so I Yeah, back me, then it, it hadn't really caught on at that point. But I, you know, the funny thing is we actually did go backwards because some of that analog technology was so good. Yeah. And to this day, we're trying to we're trying to, you know, we're trying to um, you know, uh, you know, catch that again. You know? So I mean, we're as as we as we went through the mediums. That. We're chasing the eighties. <laughs> yeah, ch chasing the dragon. Like yeah. you know, we we go from vinyl, cassette. You know they they have their their physical limitations, but then they also have, um, you know, because of those physical limitations, they almost impart a sound. Then you get to CD, um, and then digital, pure digital distribution with like iTunes and streaming. As we progress in terms of mediums, like have you found that we're we're gain like what have we gained with each successive step, and what have we lost with each? Well, successive okay, step? well that's a really good point, and. Um, you know, I thought when um, when CDs finally started coming in in the mid '80s, early '80s, um, wow, well, this was like I've been waiting for this my whole life. You know, I, you know, as as a mastering engineer, especially, it's working with some pretty high profile clients and some really well well done recordings. I could, you know, in the old days, you know, when you're worrying about something that sounds good on a piece of vinyl, or even a shitty cassette, you know, you can't really. Yeah, everything had a limitations, like like the um, the vinyl records. It, the limitations was the bottom. If you put too much bottom on it, it's gonna it's gonna overcut it. If you if if you put something a little bit out of phase, it's gonna cut into the grooves. And and those are problems we didn't want because yeah. it would, what happened was we'd send out a master, and then the pressing plant would call me, and go, you got to do this over. And it wasn't like a recall one switch. I'd have to do like a twenty five minute you know, dance, you know, because in those days there was no automation. So every recut I did was from the original tape. Okay. That's why those things sounded pretty good too. Every, every record cut in those days was, was from the original, original analog tape or a copy of it, but something really close. So anyway, um, when CDs came about, I said, well, I could put 5 dB more bottom on everything. I can make this stuff really loud. And if I you know, get some really good compressors here and I'm thinking to myself, wow, this is really, this is what I've been waiting for. And to be honest with you, I worked out pretty well. It, it bit us in the ass for a few few years because people yeah. took advantage of the technology and started making records that were way too compressed and too loud. And uh, you know, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. I was one of those guys. And I, you know, I was doing this because, you know, the louder the record, the, you know, the better you know the better jizz you got you know i'm the I'm badass i can make a rock like a you know and then and really in the end of the game in the end of the day the game was you know who can snatch the bigger client and if you and you and you noted about the guy who makes really loud records i'm cool you know yeah <laughs> anyway and um so that's how that, that ended up but it, it had a really good run and in the cds i think to this day and you know, I, you know, the streaming stuff that's out today, it's really went down, went back from, from, from eight tracks, cassettes, vinyl records that were around in the fifties to CDs, which were the savior to um, CDs going kind of down a bit and streaming or iTunes becoming, you know, any, any format that was, um, you know, internet based or, or, yeah. or, or computer based. Okay. And uh, which the, the iTunes, when they came, iTunes were replacing the CDs, and the iTunes, the problem was it was MP3 quality. Uh, it didn't sound bad, but it, it was never. It it, it it was always something, a little bit missing, 
that I found. Maybe yeah. it's not linear. It's, you know, it's not full 16 bit or 24 bit. So they fixed that up a bit. They, Apple got their shit together a little bit better. And so the, the files sounded good. They started getting higher res files from our mastering engineers and they, they started selling, you know, better sounding files. Okay, and that, that really went for about 10 years. Where, where if you want a new record, you go on iTunes and you buy it. Yeah. Okay, it was, still, it was still a physical slash, you know, a computer medium. I mean, I would say physical only because most of the people would download a CD on iTunes, a record on iTunes, and then dump it right to a CD. I know I did. So, um, and so I could listen in my car or, or you, know, you know, that was way before there was a, you know, iPhones and um and you know and 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 Bluetooth and all that stuff. Yeah. And not not way before, but yeah, before that. So I, I was like, I'd freshly downloaded a, an album from iTunes, put it on a CD, and just put it in my car and just go rocking. And um, and basically, um, that lasted to about five years ago, when streaming basically realized people said, "Why do I have to buy this? I can just, I can." Um, and I think this is where a lot of things went south. Because, um, you know, record, you know, music was deemed free. And, um, well, that's, yeah, and, that's been um, since you to, a while. You, know, you have to, uh, you have a generation, like my daughter, you know, she's 19. You know, the only thing she's bought is a vinyl record. And, and then she has no idea what that was. She just heard it's really cool. So, and I still remember the whole, the whole, um, 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 one day she bought this turntable and she called me up screaming, Daddy. Where's the play button on this? You know, <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, Man, this is a generation. All right, so you got to lift the arm up, put it down, and she went down and went, wow, it sounds so good. I mean, it was just the the uh, the lore of, a, of 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 touching the music that that a millennial would never never did before. You can actually feel it. You know, you touch the vinyl, you smell it. You know, so that that had uh, that had a real beauty to it, and that had a a, a lore to it, and it was a boutique kind of thing. So the, the, the point right now is uh, we're just, you know, there, uh, there are streaming sites now, there are high res streaming sites now, there are uh, Spotify streaming sites now, there are YouTube, you know, everyone has a little different sound to it, okay? And and in the end, it's it's really, you know, mishmash, okay? You want title, you can get high res, you gotta pay. Yeah. It's, an, it's probably double. The Spotify, the regular Spotify is good. And the Spotify, you know, they um, they they're um, they're owned by now the major labels. It's really funny how, you know, the record business is back making money because the major labels got together and said, you know what, let's just invest in this company. And so what they did is they invested in Spotify. So all the profits now, so they don't even have to sell product anymore. They're they're in the tech business, okay. And uh, um, so I mean that's something that's going to let our record industry live on. It's bad for artists because if you're not on one of these major labels and have a really good, a, a good lawyer and a good deal, you're not getting paid what you really deserve. And a yeah, lot of the, the artists are not getting paid either. So the streaming is good for a lot of things. And, you know, for, for me as a mastering engineer, um, streaming kind of, um, you know, it, it, we, we looked at all the specifics and all the, you know, all the curves and everything. Spotify, it changes their specs every month so as a mastering engineer and i have a, a, a full-time assistant who has to keep watching this you know what you know how do we um you know how do we make masters that sound great on spotify and f for the most part i try to do records uh with a, a, a dynamic in mind and one with a uh, a loud in mind <clears throat> and usually and the funny thing is most artists they don't they want the loud mind they don't care of the dynamics and everybody says they want a dynamic and then you know we're, we're, we're in an age of everything's uh, there's a competition out there so everybody you know it, even if your record sounds good and it's dynamic and somebody else's record that maybe may not even be as good as yours comes on louder and you know when it, it creates a bit of a uh, um a blur here so yeah. what we're trying to do is find a happy medium for everybody which is yeah. Do you feel that like as the, cause I mean, part, part of the appeal, at least recently of, of streaming is that they average the, the volume. It's no longer like peak normalization. You're no longer like just jacking everything right up to the ceiling. 
So that um, undoes a lot of the benefits of a loud master. Have you found it start to, you know, I know it's not, it's not like the loudness wars are over or won or anything, but has it started to move back towards people realizing? Yes, it has. Like, and, and what I try to do is I'm really very careful about um, um, if somebody's really uh, interested in having, you know, super duper loud records, I'll, 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 I'll do another pass that's dynamic, that's Spotify friendly, you know, um, uh, and uh, it, it does work a lot. I, I did some pretty big records. I did a that last year where I did just spot. I don't want to put in some naming names, but some. I did a Spotify version and they released it and it sounded great. I mean, it, it is what it is. It's still streaming. It's still MP3 quality, yeah. you know, unless you want to pay for the higher res, which most people, you know, are not really interested. I'm really in caught doing, on. You know, so I mean, um, uh, um. It's working. It's working out, okay. And yeah. and the good news is, um, you know, the, the streaming sites is more streaming sites than, than ever now. And and you could you could have a record mixed and mastered and, and have it out there in a day, yeah. okay. So it's not like you, you know a CD in the old days. Well, we need a release date of two weeks from now or three weeks from now. Records come out, man, right away. If you if you got it, if a recording artist wrote a nice hit song. And they don't want to have to wait two or three weeks to get it out. They get it out the next day. So uh, the streaming is really, really valuable on that end. So just keep making hit songs. So you, you know, you, um, <laughs> it's you that easy. Up. Huh? It's that easy. Just keep well, making you know hit what? songs. I, I really believe it. And I'm stuck in my house here too. I mean, even though this is a home studio, I, I, you know, you can, I'm going to go downstairs and show you my, you know, my setup downstairs, which is really just a, uh, you know my living room and a lounge for my clients um and um basically um you know we're we're, we're 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 you know as artists and writers and songwriters and producers we're, we're stuck and you know i, I really believe when that when that record light when the, like you're in a studio and the, the red light goes on and recording you know you you, you know then you know, stuff comes out you know you're you're really um you know, those juices, those creative juices start flowing. So I think now we can't go outside. Well, I hope you don't. Or you can't, we can't be, um, right. you know, we, we can't be, um, um, we have to do our six feet, whatever it is. And so I have a lot of friends that, uh, you know, have big studios in there. Well, the, you know, the, the artists are working six feet apart or they, they won't do the sessions until everybody's promised. They're like you know, hazmat they're suits. Feet for two weeks. <laughs> like no, I have a good friend and he's a very well-known producer. And he said, and he had a very big project going on. I don't want to name names again, but he said, the, the, you know, last week he said, we're going to wait two weeks. Everybody has to be, if you can, you know, has to be quarantined for two weeks and prove, you know, you're negative and then the sessions would start. And of course it's in a home studio, so he doesn't get arrested. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how it is up in Canada, but how here in LA, uh, you know, people are pretty, uh, they're you know they're they're ants they get antsy you know it's it's 75 degrees it's a sunny day yeah you guys have nice weather uh, in canada it's still you know it's probably still cold up there right it is today it's okay but i you know it's a, i love canada and um um do we have any questions or anything um the only yeah, thing i'm we, trying to think about is um uh, you know we we've done um um we've done records um and yeah. just you can get, like, go ahead. One one that uh, that I wanted to ask, like while we're still on streaming and sort of the impact on artists and and everyone sort of in the trenches, uh, who's who's not like running a label, yeah. Credits, like credits, essentially are currency. And before, you know, when you had a a, a record or a CD, you could open it up, you could see who mixed it, who mastered it, who played guitar yeah. on this song. And that's kind of been lost with with streaming. I know there's some, you know, some people are trying to get it back and, and track it and present it. Well, that's a huge problem. Absolutely. Yeah. And to be honest with you, that is really a currency. And 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 I find it every day that go a huge record comes out. Did you really work on that? Well, yeah, if you look at there's a CD out there, a vinyl, yeah, look, you know, my name is on it. And um 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 there are a bunch of sites out there that, that you know, like, you know, the all music, the, there's like four or five different credit sites that you, that, that are out there right now. But the bottom line is, you know, um, the Spotify's or the uh, Apple's, you know, 
they don't provide that unless uh, once in a while the iTunes were providing um, for an extra two dollars. You know, you get the, you get the booklet, okay? But in general, um, it's a huge problem because you know us engineers and producers and and all the above. We you know we now we make them. You know, this is our living. You know, yeah. if you've done a hit record, you want to tell the world, fuck man, I have a number one album out there. I have I have a top ten record. I have this and that and and uh, and it's more difficult when you get to, when you get a listener or somebody to have to look somewhere else you know for credit it's it becomes a problem and hopefully they'll get this worked out but uh, you know i have i have a good friend that um that has the same problem on, on um he's done a bunch of um really you know uh, kind of uh, documentaries and, and tv shows and everything and they and they have all the uh, all the credits on there, the 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 audio credits, the recording credits. And my friend said he was so mad. He did this one big record, Echo in the Canyon, and that was a big ass record. And when when the when the uh, when the um when you get it on Netflix, right to the end, right when the credits come on, goes right to the next show, <laughs> the next segment. And he was saying uh, to myself, "Just what about the credits were coming up?" He you know, was going to the next show, and he was like, "What?" <laughs> you know. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, he was. Yeah, I can see that's a huge problem too. But in the recording industry, we just have to. Um, we we got to start petitioning and start making you know you know these 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 uh, these companies uh, know that you know and, and you know you're you're you know you you've worked on this project. This is your baby, and um, yeah, it's I'm, a problem right now. I'm you know? thinking of the people in the trenches. Like like I don't think Rick Rubin's gonna have a problem like finding the next record. But if you're like an assistant engineer or someone trying to work your way up and someone has to go to like page 10 of all music to see your right. name misspelled in the credits, you know, it's, <laughs> it's pretty Well, tough. look, I, I feel that everybody's pain. And I, even in the old, some of the older days, I would, some records, I was, uh, some very big ass records, my name was left off. And, and when I got that and I opened the CD or the record and what they, they and then I called the guy and they go, oh shit. You know, oh, the label guy, or this one didn't do it, or that one didn't, or you didn't call them, and specifically, so I, it's it sucks, okay. But the point being is, you just keep making more of it; it'll all even out, okay. Yeah. So the, the the bottom line is, don't don't you know, don't don't you know, put your head down and go, oh, this sucks. Like you know, just realize, that it, the, you know, it's coming, okay. And um, and 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 people will know. If you worked on a hit record like the Billie Eilish's and all the other ones, and if you did these records, people will find out who did them, yeah. okay? And if they're, um, uh, uh, you know, if, if they're in records that you know people want to know who, 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 who you know, if they were so creative sound wise that people want to know who was behind them. And, yeah, uh, luckily, like word of mouth still seems to be a pretty yeah. There's a lot of chat sites major... out there, and, and um, yeah, absolutely, word of mouth is important and. You know, and and so on and so forth. But it sucks when you you know you worked on a project and put your ass in there, and you know, and a lot of times people work for credits in the old days. Yeah, I, I don't even want to say, but um, I, I had a friend who worked on one a gigantic record, and you know, and I mean we're talking major artists. You know, they sold ten million copies, and before the project release, the guy said, well, "I can give you either number. I can give you producer credits or points." And the guy opted for the producer credit because he figured this will give him a career, and um, it gave him somewhat of a career. But in, instead of having you know percentage points on, he lost like a couple million bucks. You know, Oops. and uh, you know I don't know if he ever got it back, but um, you know sometimes they you know they realize they made a mistake. But the point being is a lot of people barter you know money and stuff for credits. So th this is something we you know. Um, we need to work on okay yeah. and um i think i think this is something and lander has something you know can help out as well too you know especially on stuff that they would distribute and everything you know getting you know getting just getting credits built in somewhere into the um into the program where you you know you're listening to a record and and all the way on the bottom you scroll down to the bottom at the end the bottom of the page there's the recording credits so i think it's coming uh not fast enough as far as i'm concerned but you know, like I said, um, I'm one of the lucky ones that, you know, has been out there long enough and has a lot of credits.
Yeah. So um, just you know, don't, don't give up. Okay. Cool. And um, okay. And is there anybody? There are people calling in. Is somebody? Uh, is that how it works here? Is it? Uh, uh, I'm getting some. Um, yeah, I'm getting a couple of specific questions. Okay. Well. Okay. Um, I mean, okay. we got some mixing question. Like, have you done much? Have you done any mixing or or stem, stem mastering at least? Like, yes, I've done it. Um, like quite a bit in some pretty major records and to, to boot stem mastering. Um, as a mastering guy, you don't want to step on the guy who makes the record because um, you know they'll they'll end up sending it to somebody else in the end. But um, the stem mastering works only because it it. it It'll cut down on some recalls for the um for the mixer guy, yeah. and if he sends me you know vocals you know like six channels and 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 the only problem being is you can it's easy it's not uh, it's easy to fuck things up okay uh, on stem mastering so I don't and it takes double the amount of time so it and, and my end of the end the spectrum I prefer not getting stems they do. Some people think they sound better just because you know, a mix is going into a master. The jury's out on that, okay? But I, I do, I do, ha I did save a bunch of projects by doing stem mastering by getting vocal ups when the the the, the, um, the engineer had, had no time to do it, and we had to do yeah. a vocal up or bass up or guitar up. It really helps out. I like I said, it's not something I uh, I look I look to do, but. You know, I, I've done it, and, and I've done it quite well. And you know, I, you know, some days I thought I should have been one of those big mixer guys, but I'm happy. <clears throat> I'm really happy. Cool. I like, like, have you done thinking more and more hip hop? Like, have they ever come to you with essentially a backing track and a vocal? Mm, have sometimes. you ever had to do that? <clears throat> Once in a while, but um, um, usually um. Whoever mixing it will be doing, you know, the acapella versions. They'll do instrumental versions, TV versions without lead vocals. They'll do vocal ops. Um, yeah, I um, mean, do you do you find you get enough? Record, excuse me. Do you find you get enough? Uh, like, if mixers are sending you essentially vocal down, regular mix, vocal up. Uh, you know, if they send you a bunch of versions, does that essentially eliminate the need for, for doing stems? Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. in the old days, and they still do it now, and I do it quite often. You'll, they'll, you know, a chorus, you want to use a vocal up, and, and maybe a verse, you want to use a vocal down. So you could really just, you know, you snip a, a, a mix together. That's really badass. If, you know, using vocal up on choruses, you know, guitar up in one spot, you know, um, it really, um, I've done it quite often. You can really take the, all the elements, and this is something you should really think about. Take all the elements of of, of the best part of uh, every mix and put them together. So um, that's something to always think about. Okay. Cool. So you do like actual editing together. Yeah, just yeah, real editing. In the old days, we'd be doing it on tape, and that's uh, that's stuff. <laughs> yeah. It. In the old days, you'd have a one, and there were some famous guys in the old days. <clears throat> Called prime cuts, and they were they're pretty famous in the day. They were the guys uh, that you would you, 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 they would re-edit your record. There was another, you know, they would do all the editing on it. So they would do some pretty crazy editing. And one time, I went into the room, and all over the studio was was little pieces of tape hanging off the wall. Okay, well, those days have changed. <laughs> yeah, well, but um, yeah, no. The the bottom line is yes, um, editing like. Uh, especially vocal up, vocal down, guitar up, editing in certain spots. I mean, that's kind of done already, but, eh, you know, more of in a mixed stage, but um, um, I totally recommend that. Okay. And, um, and um, it, it just, it just takes your mix and lets it, you know, it gets the best out of it. Cool. So speaking of hip hop, which we brought up a couple of times, um, I, I definitely, this is one that's interesting for me. Uh, you pretty much like were there at the beginning of hip hop. Yes, I actually, more, more, more than you want to know, I did the first gold <laughs> hip hop record, which was um, a 12 inch record called Curtis Blow the Breaks. I did the Christmas rap and he, he came out in 1980 or 81. And um, 
It was called, you know, the, it was called the breaks. And it was one of the biggest, it's still to this day, um, one of the uh, biggest selling hip hop singles ever. And the scary part about it is that was even before sampling, before for all of the above. This that was done with a you know a hip hop record. Imagine with a live band and a live oh. drummer, and it was great. Yeah, and I can imagine. That's one record. If you ever want to, you go on your you go on your Spotify and let Curtis blow the breaks. The bottom end will blow your mind. So okay. th that's that's kind of my my question is like if you're there at the beginning of a genre. Yeah. There's there's no real precedent for it. It's not like you can reference what other people have done in the genre. And there's no lineage the way there was with rock. So no, no, were, were you flying no. blind? How did you approach it? Uh, it did just, you reference other new. genres? Well, it was just basically, you know, um, a lot of the engineers at those times were hip hop guys, and they 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 mixed stuff pretty well, and uh, and we, you know. We, it was an analog world then, so the bass was always pretty, pretty heavy. It was a, you know, it was a less sampled world, and everything was recorded and mixed to tape. That helped a lot. Um, it was, it was inherently we didn't have to. A lot of these times we didn't have to go for that sound. It was already there, and there okay. were the recordings and were mixed, mixed really well. And it's really funny. Um, I remember doing a Public Enemy record. I think the first one they did in the 83, 84, and they, they, every record they did was platinum. And I remember the, the, the producer and the, and the engineer came up to me at the end of the session, this stuff was ready. He goes, you know, there's not one played note on this whole record. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, wow, that's great. Man, yeah, that's great. You don't have to worry about the drummer showing up late or yeah, the guitar being playing. Drunk. You're asking for too much money or some guy coming in drunk and, you know, fuck that, you know. <laughs> Yeah. We can just do everything without you, <laughs> and that's really what changed the whole all the sampling and that that changed the course of of I would say you know pro program music forever. Yeah. You know? So like as it matured, did your approach to it mature? Or did you just essentially let the mixers? You it know? was always a mixer thing, you know. Um, I I, I kind of had this one sound in my head, and I had a lot of the same gear some old, really old Neumann equipment that had some big ass low end bottom end, some great compressors, a bunch of really great analog EQs. I, mean, I still have these right here, these old Sontex. Yeah. These, um, these Focusrite um, compressors and everything. Um, um, you can see them there. But um, big ass analog stuff. And that was really, uh, you know, um, kind of, uh, kind of um, what people are looking for today. You know, uh, especially do, when the whole world is digital now. But um, well, the, in general, you know, I, I had you know I had a, a a really good flow there, and it seemed to work. Some great converters, and I still have a lot of that equipment today because yeah. you know, great sound is great sound. So don't don't think you know, you know, you got to you know, uh, um, um, if, if if you got something that works, stay stay with it. Stay it's always good it. to keep new stuff around, but you know, the yeah. stuff that's tried and true. And, be, be, and the best part of the analog world right now is, and the digital world is, and I mean, I could, I could show you, I, I could open up a, a, a plug in here. I, I open up a project and, and I, I can, I, I literally um, uh, can, I, I can put 40, 40 to 30 plugins on it, you know what I mean? Would you one. though? What's that? <laughs> Would you put 40 plugins on? No, I wouldn't. I could, I have it in my leisure. I, the yeah. most I've ever done is 10 and that, that, you know, that was still a lot, but it worked really well. Yeah. And the, the, the bottom line is all this classic great equipment you can get on plugins and they sound great. So, so guys who are, and gals, whoever's doing this, you're, you're, you're doing good here. You know, I mean, you buy a hundred dollar plugin. That's, it sounds good as a, a, a $10,000, you know, hardware. Yeah. I, th I think we sometimes hardware. get too caught up in the like, if it models a piece of gear, like how exact is it? Does it sound exactly like a knee or well, exactly, exactly like a massive as, passive? Well, but rather than like, is it a useful tool on its own? Well, the user really doesn't know. You know, if you're gonna you plug in a, one of these old Sontex or one of these Focusrite EQs or or a lot of SPL stuff I have here, the really big stuff. Nobody, they, these people have never heard the original. They're, they're just they're just checking it out and. And generally speaking, um, like companies like Plugin Alliance, Soft Tube, 
Slate, all these Fab Filter. These guys really got their they got their they got their stuff down, man. It, it you know it sounds good. It really yeah. does. You know, and all the emulations of of analog equipment or their their digital equipment. That's you know everything's supposed to sound analog because. You know, digital is just the ones and zeros. Well, analog is a whole world, you know? It's a whole mishmash of, you know, bleh, you know, like, you know, stuff all over the place or digitals like that. So, you know, um, what you do is you're trying to make digital that sounds really like analog. And, and it's working. It's great. Yeah. And, um, and, Does, um, and it's only going to get better. Do you find that that goes across genres? Like... Because uh, I know like rock is so steeped in like a, a large format analog console kind of mentality, whereas yeah. you look at hip hop, it's much more willing to embrace uh, innovation well, it's, it's and changes it, in the yes, technology. Absolutely. Do you find absolutely. like they all kind of still want a little bit of that that analog magic? Yeah, everybody wants a bit of jizz, and and here's the funny thing is the the, uh, the 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 hip hop and the and a lot of the electronic and all that, it's all program music. So um, a lot of that is an inherently um, uh, uh, different world where the di it really works for digital because it, um, the, in the, uh, um, uh, you know, a lot of those synthesizers and programmers and everything, it's all digital to begin with. And, and um, you know, I, I really have to say um, from my point of view, you know, I, I have, I have a, you can see I have a, a set of, um, I have a very, I have a, 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 a really badass new SPL, whole 100% analog front end console. And I have all the plugins. So, and, and I have all the plugins. And so I, I could, what I do is, and, and I recommend this if you can, is do a pass that's through an analog board and do a pass that's through digital software. If, if you're mastering, okay, if you're recording, that's a whole different world because you're capturing things that are different. But a, in a mastering end, try to do a project that's a little more analogy or one that's more digitally, and then and then and then put them together and see which one flies. You know, yeah, and th that really helps me out a lot because I have a lot of very very fussy picky clients, and you know, and uh, um, th this really this changes the the whole the whole field. Because the client has gotten not what they usually get one or the other they're gonna like, okay? So it, it's it's really cut down on recalls and re redos and all of that. So yeah. um, you know, um, it Give takes a little longer. Right, off the, yes. right out of the game. But I, you know, like I said, that's that's you know for you, for your average home guy, you know, you, you put it through an you know you you put it through an analog EQ and put it through a nice compressor and a nice converter and see how that works out. You, you may you may find that it's like wow, and you put it back to digital. The whole world is digital now. It's never going to change. It, it is what it is. There's tape emulators. There's there's all kind of EQ emulators. Um, you know what we got to figure out is um, you know how to how to uh, capture that as best yeah. as possible. Yeah, I mean and, that, and that's, that's it. Go ahead. What's Sorry, that? yeah. I mean it's the capture where. There was this brief period where everyone was like, oh, summing mixers and this and that and everything was settled down. And it seems yeah. like people are just trying to bookend with analog where it's like track through good analog, stay in the box for mixing and then go through a bus chain, uh, and, either and at the mastering that, stage or at the, the mixing notes. stage. That, that really, and the pros do all of that. And it's funny, uh, I still, I mean, I have pretty good years right now. Uh, I have a hard time right now figuring out if something was mixed in the box or something was mixed on an analog console. Yeah, sometimes I mean, it has a little bit more. In the box. It has a little more weight when it's mixed on an analog desk, and a lot of times it's mixed on analog desk, but and it's sampled and 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 string and and and, and cut up where you know it, it, it into stems where uh, where it, it it's digitally processed. But um, like I said, it, it really every every project is different now. There's no standard anymore really yeah. isn't in workstations and in technology everything is whatever the best you can do okay and 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 we're also chasing whatever the dude who had the hit record down you know that we're chasing that sound okay so um which is which is very fair because the guy who had 
has a big hit record. He was chasing somebody else's sound. So it's yeah. just like a steep, you know, ladder. Okay. And, and, and the next guy is going to be chasing everybody's going to be chasing the sound so the compound just, you know, influences yes so when you're at home here just be and and, and and my really big tip is okay if, if you're mixing a record you know especially on the mix end not the mastering a mastering end too take a record that you think sounds really good and put you know just put that in maybe a cd or a stream put it on the side and after every mix you do Compare that mix you did to that record you sounded really good to. You thought sounded really good. And after a while, you, you, know, you keep, you know, this way, you keep tweaking. And the closer you get, I think, you know, the better, the better your product's going to be, by all means. Yeah. So, I mean, if someone's doing that, like, from your experience, what are you listening for in a good mix? Like, if they're trying to compare two things, are they trying to, like, Oh, my high end has to measure the same as this high end, or is it more well, of an I'm amorphous? Trying like really just, you're trying to get a vibe or a feel or a general, you know? No, I, I, I keep, I keep going. I, I, yeah. I hear, I hear you. I'm sorry. I'm just getting so excited about this. What <laughs> no, I listen no, for ahead. is, it's really. I'm just listening for it, an it factor. You know, do I put it on? Is it too bright? Is it not bright enough? Is it too compressed? Is it too much bottom? Is or is this like magic? Do I have, just have to push play? And 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 and, and the thing is, is not every every project is different, and you just have to know your artist. And especially for mastering guys out there, the people working on the project, keep that line of communications open. The first thing I do yeah. when I when I talk to a client is, give me uh, give me a direction. Where do you want to go with this? Do you like do you like it heavy? Do you like it bottomy? Do you like it dynamic? Do you like it loud? Do you want it pushed? Do you want it you want it dry, wet? You know, you you want this very analog sound. You know, so this way, um, you know, there's no gray area. Especially if you if you're working in a commercial end of the business, or you're working on projects where where you know, obviously the the producer, the engineer, your producer or the the person running the project is not in the same room we don't do that anymore this what, is what if you this is the, our new or this is our new um this is our new new normal now yeah it's like, the new norm you know hey and i and to be honest with you i have a full-time engineer and he uh he won't come in <laughs> <laughs> i don't blame him so we you know we figured out a great way to do this as long as the internet's working i got fast internet you know he he downloads the projects. He puts them down on Dropbox and pull them up on Drop. Dropbox is fantastic. I love that company, man. And they, you know, they you know, a lot of they have a lot of people no that don't like them. Either, but they they work for me because I pull up the project, master it, put it back in Dropbox. My engineer takes it at home and does uh, you know, does all the uh, um, you know, the uh, the the sequence work and all the um, the coding work and everything. And it goes out and we, you know, so um, the whole, and, and it's the same in recording now, and this is going to be rampant. I remember years ago, like somebody did a session and we did a session and the two players were in, in Europe. One player was in, in, in California. One was in New York. They didn't, I remember there was like the big deal where, where all the players were all over the country, all over the world. And they all got together to do a session. Well, that's the new normal. <laughs> yeah. We're going to see. And, and, and God, you know, it's good. Things start on time and, and the creativity, just think about it. You know, you could get so many, you know, different people playing on so many different things. And it's all about technology, you know, internet technology and, and digital technology, really. Yeah. And uh, it's really getting exciting. It's pretty cool. Uh, so going Great. back to the, the, like, what to listen for. You know, what, what if you're the person doing everything? What if you're the producer, the, the engineer, the mixer, like people working at home where they're essentially yeah. wearing all the hats? Can you give any tips in terms of like uh, what they should focus in? Should they change their mindset on each stage? Should they try oh, yeah, and like yeah, determine a vision and stick with it through thick and thin? Well, the vision is really important and have a vision and always try to stick with it. Because I remember a lot of artists, and, and this really, it was good, you know, made me feel great in the old days, where, you know, the artists would come in, and as soon as we finished mastering the records, damn, that's exactly how I visioned it when I started recording. So it's really good to have a vision, 
if things go sideways here and there, just follow the sideways path. Go with, you know, go with the, um, the flow, you know, uh, don't necessarily get too hung up on things. Cause I've had, yeah. I, I've had a lot of clients where they, they would just, I, I have to do like four or five recalls or six recalls for just the dumbest stuff. And, but it was important to the client. So yeah. you have to, you know, if, if you're working in a commercial studio, you have to, um, after a while say no, uh, or another one, just, you know, be sympathetic to somebody's needs. Uh, and and what, what I found is, is um, less is more, generally speaking. Um, the less you, you know, sometimes, uh, the, the, you know, for me, sometimes the least amount of things I do on a project is yeah. the best. Okay. And, and, uh, and, and like I said, get, Sorry, finish. Get, get some, go ahead. Get, get, um, let me just finish. Get yeah. some really good speakers. Okay. Get some <laughs> monitors that you know. And this is really, this is the key, I think, to, uh, to uh, anything in recording. You know, you got to hear, you got to have a place where you hear this. Okay. Whether it's your car, your basement, you got some monitors, you know, whatever it is. Obviously, Al, you know that as yeah. being an engineer, you know, speakers are they're eighty percent of your sound. If you can't hear it, you can't imagine it. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can't hear what you don't hear, or you can't like act on what you don't hear. Um, well, the worst thing is, I mean, yeah, I, and this is, happens to me all the time. That's why I don't even want people coming into my studio. It sounds so good here, you know. You know, whatever, you know, it, it, like it sounds so good here, you know, but I, I try to let them know that, you know, you know, this, you got to take this home and really, you know, it sounds my this studio of mine is tuned and it sounds amazing, but take it in a room where you're listening on, iP you know, on earbuds or like a little, yeah. little Bluetooth boom box or a shitty car stereo, you know, and then, then find that fail. And this is another thing I really, really, and really, um, uh, um, and try to um, impart. Um, try to find that fail-safe system. Find find a speaker. I have a couple here. I have an old Advent speakers. These uh, these uh, these old. Um, you can see these these old little um, computer monitors made by okay. Advent and made by AR, and they were um, they they really super bright and they're um, they they sound okay, but if if you're doing if I'm doing a, a, a master and and I'm not sure exactly, you know, where I'm at here, which sometimes happens. I put them on there and I'll know in a second, okay, because they're overly bright speakers. They don't have a lot of bottom. But if you put something on, on that fail-safe system that really, um, that sounds perfect, you're, you're good to go. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, that's why a lot of people, I notice the NS10s in the back. And, you know, you have a lot of mixers I, you know, mixing I, on NS10s. I'm not the biggest fan of them, but they, they work. They really do. Yeah. Sometimes I put them up and go, what were they thinking when they made these? And sometimes I go, you know, and the clients come in and when they do show up because people want to come. They want to hang out with me and, and do that. So, you know, generally speaking, um, um, the, the NS10s are really the holy grail of, you know, uh, of kind of cheesy sound. <laughs> yeah, it seems, it just seems to have caught on where it's like no one, I don't think anyone likes them in the sense of like, they love how they sound. It's more just well, like, it's another thing. It's, if you get exactly. it to sound a certain way, it's going to translate, it's going to work no matter what. Yeah, that, that's, play that's been on. around forever. Yeah. Absolutely. That's been around forever and ever. And, and more than anything else now, um, you know, just, you know, just find that reference point. And I'm sure you do too. I, I've seen you, you would work there. You you got, you know, you got a nice reference point there, you know, and I, and then I know you have a studio over at Lander and you, and you, you probably, you work there and you work at home. So when you do a session there and you take it home, you want it to translate. And, um, and the same is here. When I do a session, I, I want to, and I feel it sounds perfect here. And I, I want to take it in my car, man. And, and by the way, for me, you know, you know um, I'm digging a freshly minted 16 bit CD freshly burned one, you know, throw it in my, in my camera. It's still that smoking. Has shape. Huh? <laughs> it's still like smoking. Yeah. You know, I gotta be honest with you. Freshly burned 16 bit CD, throw in my car. I got an old Camry with, a, with an eight speaker JBL system. I get rid of the car. I'll never get rid of the car because of the stereo. <laughs> and man, that, if, if that thing rocks, you know? So, you know, find, you know, find a system there that, you know, 
that you you know you have fun with and and you know how it sounds so would you say it's familiar. it's like a combination of quality and familiarity or can familiarity over time like let's say you can't afford you know crazy pmcs or atcs or barefoot or any of that right. is it more important to try and just like learn your system so that you just know it like the back of your hand or should you yes, always be trying to go up some objective standard of quality oh absolutely and 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 the scary part is that's about 78 75 80 percent of people listen to music on a daily basis are listening on the delay buds okay yeah. and I'm, i'll be honest with you i've got two pairs myself I never I thought listen, I, I listen on Apple earbuds. They're not bad. And you know, I, I do a lot of bike riding, and I you know I do I, and and uh, and uh, up until two weeks ago, I was doing a lot of exercising and a lot of you know and those earbuds, man, they just go right in, and they sound okay, you know. And and I've been I've been referencing off of those. So, you know, if you really want to get it, you know, find out what something you know sounds like on a on a on a gigantic level. Make sure they sound good on those little. The, I like the little uh, Apple earbuds, the Pro ones, the ones in the noise reduction. They yeah. got good ass, good bottom, and you know, I, I think this is like what we, we've come to. <laughs> but it, it's also the, the 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 portability is scary. I mean, I go, I, I put a set of those on my bike. You know, I put in, you know, I I put them on my ears, and I I go bike riding, and and and, and they're fun. So I mean, so the, uh, us music makers. We really want to uh, focus on those two, okay? Yeah. Make sure it sounds good on a nice stereo system, but focus on the, the that crappy earbud Bluetooth speaker kind of sound, because you know, the, the, in the end, that's kind of where it's going. Yeah, I mean, you play to the room you got, you know. Yeah, but it, it's but have fun making it. Why the main thing is <clears throat> maybe you know the people listening to it, but when we're making music, we want to have fun. So that's why the, those big monitors sound good. You turn it off and you you're dancing around. But um, you know, just remember the you know, the big picture is you know everything has become portable, which is great. You know, which I find uh, phenomenal. Okay, and um, yeah. I think I'm monitoring. That's about it. You know, I just you know sometimes less is you know the same cheesy is good. So so you that know? whole less is more thing, like. Have you found over time that that translates back into every stage, you know, at the mixing stage, the production stage, the arrangement stage, where it's like only what's needed, you know, the, the quote, make everything as simple as possible, but no simpler, that kind of thing? Like, yes. And, and it's been true and tried and true. And it, over the years, it's really worked. I mean, and I can give you one example of that Nirvana Nevermind record. You know, Andy Wallace, who mixed it, was a good friend of mine. And I, I, I you know, I, I, you know, when we sat down one day and, and you know, I mastered that record and I, I couldn't, it was like, wow, how did you get that sound? What did you do to get that, you know, that bass like that? And he said, well, I just took everything out. <laughs> and like 20, 30, 25, 30. And this is well documented. You know, yeah. I didn't, you know, and he, he pretty much cleaned up everything, got rid of, got rid of this, that, this, that, you know, when, when you open up something and there's more space, especially the space thing, everything sounds louder. So the intro, the stuff that you left behind, it just translates with more impact. So you know, busy records are good, and you know, just remember that. Uh, you know, when you know, when everything's like a clump, it, 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 it to me personally, my the, the, my favorite sound is with a lot of separation and yeah. a lot of you know. Where, where, um, where you can hear everything and every every instrument has ha, has a um, you know has, has a distinct flavor, okay, rather than just one big mush, okay, which you know we all do. Well, so speaking of the Nirvana, and well, one thing I really want to know, like for us regular folk, uh, you know these well, records. I they come out and it's like, you know, I know them as either huge hits or even in the case of Nevermind, like a cultural milestone. Sure. But when they show up to you, they're just some band's new album. Like, are there kind any, of. are there any that where you heard it and you're just like, this is going to be a hit? Like, for sure, this is going to well, be a yeah, hit and that happened? I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I, I'm, I'm no clairvoyant, but that Nevermind record I put on, it goes, wow, it sounds really, 
this sounds much better than any alternative record I've worked on. And I did a lot of those Sonic Youth records, Pixies yeah. and all those. And they were kind of good records, very cool records. But at, at that point in time, there was no, um, uh, you know, there, there, none of those record bands made uh, Smashing Pumpkins as well. A lot of those bands, they, you know, they never made a gigantic hit single, you know, like sounds like teen, you know, smells like teen yeah. spirit. They never had a gigantic hit single. Okay. So all of a sudden this, you know, this, this punk band, you know, alternative band that just, you know, raggedy kids come out and, 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 and they kick ass with that hit songs, you know? So when I first heard that, I went, yeah, you know, I think this might do something. Yeah. And then, okay, next I'm done. <laughs> but that, that was a, that was a great session because, the whole band showed up, the engineers showed up, the producers showed up, the labels people showed up. And you know, it's one of those, like if you're an engineer or a recording engineer or mastering, every, we all have these memories of the great sessions we've done. I'm sure Al, you have yeah. a few down you know, in that in that hard drive of yours. Like, wow, <laughs> the lizard part fun. of my brain way in the back. <laughs> but you know, like I said, um, you know, it's also, you know, important to us have fun, okay? Not, you know, not every project's going to make a ton of money, but uh, if if you can, you know, um, if you can follow your dream here, with, and you could just be like the Billy Eilishes or like these these kids who are making records at home that that really have something special. And, yeah. You know, just, and I'm sure she was thinking, "Wow, how do I make a record that sounds like blah 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 blah?" And then the blah 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 says, well, "You know, so it's it's all like a um." It's a timeline, okay, and um, and, and you know, and so you should never, ever, 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 you know, you know, um, think you can't just make make the next big thing because yeah. you can and you will, okay. And well, that, you know, guys like that's guys, been like super interesting. Where you know, you mentioned Billie Eilish and like the the past couple of years, two of the biggest acts, and and not just in terms of the music, like people loving the music, but people loving the sound of the records. I think Billie Eilish, I think Tame Impala. And yeah. they're both just, they were both just home recordings. And and people yeah, ask yeah. like, how do I get that sound? And like, Tame Impala is a 57 in the kick drum, you know, like the last thing most people yeah. would use. And people are asking like, how yeah. do I get that sound? So it's, you know, there, there's at a certain point you're moving laterally. It's not just this constant, you know, spend more money and you're gonna just keep going up. There's Mm -hmm. an aesthetic to it that like you know just just if you explore a little bit more you're probably gonna you don't need money to make a hit record that's what i'm trying to say no you don't and and, and even more now than ever the, the the technology has gotten so inexpensive well, you really just need a bunch of good mics and you need some really good plugins and a really good daw and and you know skills and really you know, and the main thing is that really the great, the mics are really cheap right now. You get one of those Slate digital mics, man. That, that thing, you get like 15 great sounds on it. Everybody's making those those now, um, you know, the, 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 the all-in-one mics where you yeah, get- Yeah, Antelope the has theirs. Mics. And it's fantastic, you know, and, you know, for a grand or so, 1500 bucks, you know, you get yourself a couple of really smoking ass mics. And then, you know, like I said, it's and and then it's a lot, especially if you're doing a lot of program music, and you you, you get a lot of great plugins and the plugins, you you, you know, uh, you can make really great sounding records. And every there was this whole backlash, because you know Billy Eilish is the, the guy who mixes her records. Rob Kanilski is a really good friend of mine, yeah. and we do a lot of records together. I don't I don't I don't work with her, but I've done a lot of his projects. And this man is a fucking genius when it comes to mixing. And he's, he's been doing this for a long time. Just all of a sudden he did a record like that. And people noticed, mm. you know, and, um, and, and, um, and a lot of times, it, you know, uh, um, and like I said, sometimes some of the best projects I ever did, the most accolades I ever got was I just pushed play. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously nobody's giving away secrets, but the point being is, um, uh, um, it, 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 everybody's out. Every, there's nobody out there that can't be the next Tame Impala or Billy Eilish or bigger, you know? Yeah, it's, you know, ideas, 
I, I just find it interesting, like like the ideas, it's not like they trump the sound, it's like they, they become an alternate sound, like people want to hear something different, not necessarily a slightly better version of what's already there. Of course. Um, and, and then, and, and, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm done, I'm done. But anyway, you, you can, you know, as, you know, as, as being, you know, you know, one of the chief engineers at Lander, you know, you, you're getting, you're hearing a lot of stuff from a lot of different points of view from everywhere, you know, and, um, and it, it's great because, um, you know, the companies like Lander, you know, right now they're, you know, and they're in the position right now to really, you know, to, to take this another step forward, you know, we can, the home recording, you could have something mastered and brought back to you in an hour or two, you know what I mean? Or, you know, or, or, or some really something professionally done and, and something that sounds really good. I know, you know, in, 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 in I, I, I'm, I'm not sure what the, the take back time on, on a master from you guys are, but it, it's, it's, it's fast. It's and fast, this yeah. is where our technology is coming in, where you can get feedback on a record, you can, hear what it sounds like so maybe you'll change your mix around well you you know you get it and in and 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 um and and um i i think that's amazing okay so we're, we're, we're all the technology is all taken care of right now now basically it, it's those it's those it's those young kids or the, the people that really want to explore another dimension that, that's yeah. our future and Guys like Lander and you and me and all these other people are here to help. And, and we're doing good. We're doing really good work out of it, you know. And I'm proud of everybody in there because I, I, I get a lot of, you know, you know, uh, in, in my in my business, I, I get, you know, I get a lot of projects. And, and I'll be honest with you, uh, uh, people are doing good work, really, really good work. I'm very proud of, uh, of a lot of these guys out there that are, that know their stuff. They read the magazines, they're on chat sites. You know, and um, and uh, and we're all trying to improve our, our, our work. You know, I know the guys at Lander are trying to make something that's really you know yeah. really mind you know you know you know the ne next level stuff. And it's and you know I know you guys, and it's coming. And uh, and what I try to do is just keep you know you know just keep that flow going. You know, and, you know all, always educating yourself. You know, what did that guy do? You know, you, you know talking to people. It's, it's always good to have a good a good fellowship of a network of, you know, of engineer guys out there, producer people out there, artists out there that, that you know, that, that you know, that you're chatting together. And right now, with the Zoom thing, we're like, we're here. I, I have no doubt within the next two or three months, somebody's going to come out with some music, and maybe not one person, but many, that, that was recorded at home and mixed at home and, and even mastered at home or, or thereabouts, and it's just going to be the next big thing yeah and it could be the next few big things so I, I think now when we're we're all kind of confined you know and we you know what are we going to do we're going to watch how many sh tv shows are we going to watch we're going to go yeah you're, you're going to run out of netflix at some point we're going to go in the goddamn garage and put yeah. some of those amps up and push record man and start, start messing around and you know or, or just start doing plugins and and doing beats and all that stuff so I'm really excited about, you know, I'm not excited about the coronavirus, but I'm excited about what <laughs> it's gotten is. us into. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's, you know, the silver lining. But um, the point being, is I think it's not going to last. That's why when, when you, we're here now and let's, let's take advantage of, yeah. uh, the, uh, of the home set, the home setup. Have you, have you done like much uh, sort of independent artists? Like, do you get a lot of those? Um, home record is people like not on labels just contacting you yes i do and and that's kind of the beauty of of my work it's like it's uh runs the gamut and 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 then and more than anything else i really really you know uh, you know i really appreciate when somebody's um, kids out there are, are they even the kids or adults they're following their dream they're they're you know this is their passion this is passion to them recording mixing mastering you know, writing songs, performing, and so on and so forth, you know, you know, whether it makes money or not. And sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, but how can you put a price on, on, on recording a song and, and, and mixing it and, and writing it and, and, and layering it and doing a lot of work and, 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 
and, and having it being released. And, and yeah, so, you know, it's labor of love describes it pretty much. Yeah, so I mean, the point of, of, of everybody getting rich out of music, you know, it, it can happen and it will, okay? And not everybody will, but the, the bottom line is it's there for the taking. You know what I mean? It's, it's all there, okay? And, and, and the best part about it is now you could, you know, with, with all this, you know, all this social media and, and all these stream sites and, 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 and uh, Facebook, Instagram and all Twitter, you could, you could basically do a whole um, marketing and program right out of your house. You know? Yeah, I, that's one thing we're seeing with independent artists, which, which is where, you know, there's a lot of startups trying to like help out with that because yeah. you're at the point where you have to wear all the hats and there's only so many hours in a day when you have to be your your own campaign manager your own recording engineer <laughs> your own artist your own t-boy <laughs> you know it's really it's, true. Uh, and more than anything else and people are getting good at it and number two i think that's going to be i mean the longer we stay at home and and i really you know i don't i follow the news as much as i can but i, I really am not that you know, I don't know when bands are going to get out to start performing again. You know, yeah. so really, it's basically um, uh, um, you know, a lot of stay-at-home bands now, and and it's can it can only be good. It can only work out well because um, you know, eventually when this all opens up, and you're going to have some pretty kick-ass music out there. You know, so yeah. and I so I believe you know I know this stay at home it sucks and this and that and off, you know eating another fucking Domino's pizza or another taco but I'd love a taco the, right now. What's that? I'd love a taco right now. Okay, I'll order you one. <laughs> I'll yeah, send it out. Just FedEx. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's tacos in Canada, not me. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the point being is we're we're, we're you know. We're stuck here, so let's make a let's make the let's make something really good. Yeah. Okay. And is any other questions? Anything like any questions? I need to. Um, uh, um, I think we we kind of I mean, gotten a lot of addressing about streaming. Yeah, like we had here. a I had a bunch. Like you know, I have some mastering specific questions for the the people out there that are interested. We definitely touched on on things. I mean, okay. like I know. From just from a, a sonic standpoint, like when you try and give people your tips or your tricks or your secrets or things like that, they, they don't always translate, but is there anything that you found time and time again, like approaching something this way or doing something this way or making something sound, like keeping a certain thing in mind always leads to good results? Um, yeah, I believe so. And I believe also having, the main thing is when you start a project, just have a vision yeah. Just, you know, kind of envision it being finished and like being on the radio or on streaming and people loving it. And, um, you know, that's a start starting point. It's, it's sometimes you got to be really careful. And, and I'll, um, I'll say this one very, very important. Do not start comparing with everybody else because they say the one way you can get every get stressed out in this world have high levels of stress and start comparing what you do to somebody else. Yeah. What they do. Like, you know, oh, I didn't get that gig or man, I listened to that. How do they get that guitar sound? And then they it just goes through their mind, you know, why can't I do that? You know, just everybody just be your original self. Okay. You know, um, don't try to um it's always a good idea to see what the other guys, you know, or gal is doing, but don't try to get stressed when you can't do what they do. You, maybe Maybe your 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 next step is to do something better or something as good in a different vein. Because I have noticed that you know I, I I'm, I'm I get at fault there too when I you know I, I listen to something and wow how did they do that you know yeah. or like wow that thing sounds incredible you know and or like I, how come I didn't get to you know somebody else's record did really well and mine didn't you know so put that in the back and just. Go out and have fun and try to, you know, try to, you know, at some point make the stuff that you do now uh, a, a, a gold standard. Okay. Uh, excellent advice, especially in the day of the days of YouTube, where like yeah. you're, you're no longer in competition with like the best piano player on the block. It's the best piano yeah, exactly. player in the world. You know, everyone's there and everyone can see everyone else. 
waiting on a second. Uh, anyway, I'm sorry. Yes, absolutely. No worries. I guess the phone was ringing. <laughs> I have a landline. Anyway, I don't need that. But anyway, yes, I have the gold standard. And, you know, and, and really uh, follow your dream. If your dream is to, you know, to, you know, to have um, a project that is something that's, um, um, you know, something that's, that's, that's accessible and really want to change, you know, you, you, you want to be there. Just, you know, um, just keep working on it until you find it, okay? You'll, you'll, you'll be there. Any other questions I can do? I mean, in terms of creativity, I have no advice other than just, you know, just, you know, you know, do a follow whatever, whatever's in your heart. And I mean, for songwriting, there are tips for songwriters and singers there are tips in getting your better voice and vocals and everything. But, you know, you know, to get all that in one, in one package, man, that's, if you, if you can do that and have something be successful and have songs that, 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 you know other people are singing brilliant yeah i mean that's it like you have all the you know tips advice things like this and but then there's always someone coming along doing the complete opposite and being like wildly successful at it so you know it's it's always uh so we we did get a question here um sure all right when how do you know okay this is it like like you know, I guess the old, uh, the, the um, I forget who said it. I think Da Vinci, the, the art is never finished, only abandoned. How do you know, like when to just stop? Like, I know you probably work on, you know, deadlines definitely help and people waiting well, for uh, stuff, but. I mean, okay, so. Like you're if you're asking, an artist working at home. When is like, enough enough? Okay. Yeah, like well, when do you just <laughs> finally say, uh, I'm gonna give this to the world? Like, like, well, you know, there's two ways you can go about when it. When does the baby come you, out? You could run out of money. <laughs> you could run <laughs> out of studio time. Yeah, yeah. You could That's have everybody good... in your band saying, you know, blank you, you know, screw you. Oh. Uh, we're done here. And everybody says, this guy is crazy. Or maybe the guy who's crazy is the one who's like, you know, if, if he waited another week or two and more recording, it would have been brilliant. So you have to kind of... Um, know your limitations but also know when uh, enough is enough and when it's ready okay and um and i have a lot of friends out there and they're pretty well-known guys that you know after you've made enough records if you made a certain amount of records and a certain amount of music you know when that yeah. when that minute happens okay it, it's just like okay i'm done and if and if you're new at this you know obviously you know um just, just remember, uh, um, there, are, there are two ways to look at it. The more you work on something, the better it's going to be. <laughs> and, 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 and I know somebody who would just keep mixing a song, a very well-known mix, and keep mixing it and mixing it. And, and you know, he wasn't and mixing it and, and over again. I'd master and mix it again. And that became a huge hit song. Okay, so it's not unlikely, you know, the more you work on something, the better it's going to be. But just yeah. know when enough, you know. You just yeah. you, you, nobody can tell you, okay. And um, and um. So it's just a question of like being disciplined enough to know, know when yeah. to draw the line between like what's a mistake and what is just something I can make different. Exactly. And um, and, and know, and and know um, you know, know you you know you you've reached your you've reached yeah. that the you've got you know you're gonna any more work you're gonna go backwards. And I, I find it, that when I'm working, when I get overloaded with certain things, and 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 I and I get too, um, and we're working on one project, and and an album could have eleven songs, and every one is different. You know, I get over, you know, and it's a lot of overloading. Okay, so you know, a lot of times too, just take a step back, go out and take a fresh breath of air. You know, um, you know, and, and find ways also to reset your mind. Okay, you know, yeah. just meditate for a minute, go out and, you know, play basketball or something like you do whatever, something, you know, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, um, there's no rules or no rules and no right. But the point is, you know, use your judgment. Okay. And, and like I said, um, you know, there are people out there that have an unlimited, that have, you know, not, I wouldn't say unlimited, but really very resourceful. And those people I, I take my hat off to because 
I do believe the more you work on something, the better it can become. But just, uh, you know, uh, but you know, the creativity also has a, a peak. Yeah, I mean, there's the point of diminishing returns. I'm thinking of like oh, the yeah. story of Bruce Woodian when he was mixing Billy Jean. He was up at like mix 78 or something. Yeah. And then Quincy Jones came in and was like, can I listen to mix number two? And that's the one yep. they went with. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, and, 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 and those stories are not uncommon. And uh, by the way, another famous um, producer story was like that Mutt Lang, who, you know, did Back in Black, he did Def Leppards, he did uh, some of the biggest, Brian Adams, those biggest songs. Yeah. Do you know, I mean, I know this because I've worked on a lot of those records, and especially the Def Leppard, the Hysteria, in a, the one, hysteria one where it sold almost 20 million records, mm -hmm. 20 million copies. Do you know each song on that record took almost 30 days to mix? For the Brian Adams, a big song he did, almost yeah. 25 to 30 days on a mix. Can yeah. you imagine that? And how, how do you, how can you fault that when the, the when the stuff gets so um, you know, when it, it, it was such unusually great records? Okay, so um. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm one person that does agree, you know, the more time you spend on something, you know, but also know that your, your first reactions are usually your best. Okay, that's why mix three on Quincy Jones was correct, mix two. Yeah. Your first impressions are usually the correct ones. So is it kind of like finding that balance of like, uh, I know this comes up a lot where like the more you work on something, the more you're going to start to lose perspective. So yes. it's like try and, and solidify your perspective or your direction or your vision right at the beginning, like trusting your gut. And Absolutely. then it just becomes like roll up your sleeves and do grunt work to mm -hmm. get it there. But the point being is you're going to get to mix 80, you know, and no matter what, and, you know, so you, there's no little fairy up there saying, just stop here, stop here. Yeah. You just stop here, you know, and, and then the other, you know, the other fairy goes, no, keep going. You get, it'll get better. It'll get better, you know. So, um, you know, you know um, there's no rule. And the best, that's the best, greatest thing about our business here we're in. There are no rules other than just, you know, make something badass, make something that does something to somebody, make something that, uh, you know, has an it factor that's like what puts it on, does something to you. I mean, that's kind of what the Billie Eilish's of this world did. You know, it took people and they, they you know, they, they fir at first listen, even I, you know, and I, and, and, I, I listen and I go, wow, that's cool, man. That's, you know, they, that's, they're trying to go, go for, uh, you know, this is different. So um, uh, what I'm trying to say is just, you know, it, it can happen. It can always happen. Yeah. And, and, and trust and yourself this, and work hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got it. All right. Anything else we need? Uh, we haven't gone up through on. Um, uh, no, I mean, I mean, there's a couple of like, like, gear questions you know uh, i don't know if you want some mastering specific stuff um, uh, yeah whatever you want whatever whatever you know whatever uh and anything that uh, like when you get stuff in when you get mixes in are, are you finding you know i know there, there was definitely a trend of well probably still is a trend of mixers just mixing through uh limiters like brick wall limiters you know essentially uh -huh. coming to you crazy loud uh, okay. Do you find that's receded a bit? Like, are you put always pushing for more headroom? Like, I know in my experience, it's not just about like I'm an old person. And I don't like loud music. <laughs> no, you're not. It's that when something is that heavily brick walled, uh, other processes have more of a, a collateral damage effect. If I try and get in there with EQ, I find everything falls apart way faster than if I've got an unlimited mix that I can kind of work on and then bring it up to level. Well, so okay. in terms of like leaving headroom, do you prefer uh, dynamic mixes? Do you just not care? Um, whatever comes in is what comes in. Here, here's, here's all of the above. What, yeah. what, I, what I find is, uh, and almost every, every major mix guy I'd work with and, I, and people as well, they're, they're doing two, they're sending me a reference mix that's pretty brick wall loud. And they're sending me, um, a master mix that's unbrick walled loud, unbrick walled yeah. at all. And to me, this is like brilliant. Okay. I, you know, this is what, you know, kind of the artists have been listening to. Uh, 
So generally speaking, on most major projects, on everyone, I will get I will get a um a, a reference track. I mean, you know, and this this is something you you know, if you're mixing records or recording, please, very important to do. Do one that you think sounds really good. That um, and so a lot of times I've used the, the clients have given me the brick walled master, and I've used it because I really I I, th I I couldn't even I couldn't compare. I couldn't. They always say, well, you can do better than that. A few times, I couldn't do better than that, you know. And and I, I'm and and not 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 usually, but um, the main thing is do a brick wall mix and one that I wouldn't say brick wall. Do one that's kind of loud, referencey, and that's that's vibey, you know, to give to your clients and to guys like me, you know, give give one that is less compressed, you know, dynamic, and you know, give me give me some space, man, because. You know, generally speaking, nine times out of ten, I'll, I'll beat that reference mix. You know, and and um, and not not only that, but I know where they're coming from. It's really important to you know, as a mastering guy, know where your client is coming from. It, you know, this is what I, you know. Then I'll get a I'll get a note. Well, the client loved the reference mixes, so try to make them, try to keep them as close to that. And um, generally, you know, then and then I have I have a clear path on how to make everybody happy. Yeah. So uh, do both. Do one that's you know that's loud, and do one that's dynamic. Yeah. Right? So they 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 know what you're hearing, and then yeah, you, know, and you, you can always use the brick wall one if if you feel yeah. it's fine. And, I, and like I said, yeah, and I don't recommend you know like mastering on your own. I really don't. That's another yeah. thing uh, that we get into. I don't recommend it for a lot of reasons. Maybe you know um and there, you know there are people out there that they can you know wiggle rates and everything, but. You know that extra set of ears that somebody who is really, you know, um, done this, you know, thousands of times. It really knows what, how to take your music to another level. You know, um, so like I said, uh, it's good to, you know, good to do your your reference mix and do one that the client likes. But you know, um, uh, in in general, uh, you know, guys like us, we we can, we, you know, we can take that to another level. Yeah. So do you find like, you know, if someone comes in and, and asks for something like, uh, if they start getting specific about like uh, frequency things or like, oh, I really want, yeah. I want it to be brighter or something. And you think that's maybe not the best idea. Do you either, you know, uh, explain things to them or do you essentially take their feedback, try and hear what inside that is like, what did they not like? Because usually when people are like, I don't like this, or I want more of that. It's like, it's not always just that thing. It's like, there's something they're not hearing, something they're not feeling. Do you try and like get a little bit beyond if someone's like, I want it brighter and you don't think it should be brighter. Do you try and find some other way more that you know is going to like please them, but also maintain the, the you know, the ultimately the goal of like, translating across no, that's systems a, you know, and sounding good incredible point else. incredible point now um yes well here's the deal um you know we're here to make our you know we're here to make our clients happy okay yeah. and, and 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 people you know maybe really want something on the bright side or they want something a little heavy bottomy that i, I may not so agree with but here, here's the deal um this is not my project this is not my record to make those ups. they're not hiring me as a producer they're hiring me with somebody to take their sound and, and you know follow their you know follow their vision okay yeah. and, and there are times where i may i may be a little disagreement of you know uh, and here here and there which you know which which is not uncommon for me but uh i say how about i know you really like that let's let me here try this let me see if that doesn't work we can go back to this or you know just give it a shot okay yeah. Or else, you know, the client you put it on, you go, well, you know, I, it it has it's vibey, you know, and and everybody loves it, and maybe bright, and maybe mid mid rangey and bold, but there's something vibey about it, and so I, I'm, you know, like I said, I'm not hired as a producer. I'm not really. I'm there if somebody, you know, somebody really likes the work they've done. Um, I'm here. I'm here to take that work they've done to another level. Okay, whether whether it's. Um, Giving it a little, you know, smooth out, or just keeping their integrity, their their original integrity. 
And and that that's kind of the name of the game here, because um, you know, we're, we're out here to make people, you know, we're not we're here we're here as as engineers and as professionals here, you know, we're here to make our, our clients happy. Okay. Now, you know, and and a happy client, you know, a happy engineer is a happy client. And 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 when they you know, when they're happy that they they give us more work. We keep going on it. So I, I respect main thing is respect yeah. the client, respect their, you know, their 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 division, but also know that um there's limitations there. Okay. Yeah, so you know, take any um any any suggestions in good faith, but you know, find your your best way of achieving that vision, not just like I want more treble and you just boost the treble. You find like yeah, totally. Um, yeah. and not only that, but um, uh, um, uh, um, you know, it's good. You know, and just have a, a bit of a few options. You know, well, here's what. Try this one. What do you think? And then um, you know, um, so and that's that's really good. And that's why digital technology is so great. You, you yeah. can just recall and. And and change things around. Bam, bam, bam. Done, done. Two plugins, three. You know, this different converter, this, that. And, uh, excuse me. And and you got a whole new sound. Okay. So uh, you know, re respect their vision, but also respect the, the process. Okay. Cool. So speaking of uh, plugins, I mean, nerd nerd question here. But are there any sure. specifically that you you love, you use all the time? Do you have like 800 EQs or just one or two that you go to? You know, it's funny. I, I have, I mean, if you show my, if you open my computer, you'll laugh. I have, I mean, I, I you know, I, um, I, I, I've kind of, you know, I have endorsement deals with a lot of different yes, plugins. Yes, you probably have everything. So um, the funny thing is I open it up and I'm like, wow, I got that many. It's like, and you know, I use like four or five or six. I love the slate ones, the fab ones are great. Yeah. The, um, um the, all the uh and the, the plugin alliance man they just the spl they they, they, they it's so much you know my, my feeling is um you know find four or five that just work for you okay um slate came out with this new infinity q that man that is mind-blowing great you yeah. know it, it's a copy of like what the fab did but took it into another level uh, i helped them do some presets on there and they're really good uh, that's a fantastic one. Fab stuff is great. Um, all, all the soft tube stuff, you know, channel. I mean, it just goes on. The yeah. SPL stuff is good. Um, the white stuff is really good. Um, you know, I think you really can't go wrong anywhere. Um, and, and a lot of the ones, I mean, I just don't have the time of day to check out which ones. And my assistant, who does have the time of day, <laughs> You know, he, he, he recommends all these new ones for me and some of them work really well. I got to admit that mag stuff is good. I, uh, um, there's a bunch that are fantastic. You know, I, I lead tons of fab stuff, the slate, the plugin Alliance stuff. I love the SPL. I mean, yeah. um, as a rule, the Sonics and inflator is good. Um, uh, just, but do you find you know, it's ha like, Sometimes at some point it becomes a full-time job to stand on top of everything. Well, yes, it is. And it's, it's kind of like find find what works. I like, you know, keep the feelers out for new stuff. And, and mm -hmm. you know, I find a good rule of thumb is if I've run into the same problem three times, yeah, <laughs> then I probably True. need to look at, at buying something to fix that problem. Well, but yeah, if, if you're just precise. never running into the problem, then it's not a problem. <laughs> well, you you're got. a smart guy. And what's your, I mean, and not only that, but um, <clears throat> there there are plugins that really <clears throat> that uh, they're <clears throat> excuse me that um that have a great workflow to them that have a really good you know a feel you know what I mean and and that, that's a main that's a very you know a lot of plugins I like they use that are I'm not going to mention names they sound good but they're a damn buggy yeah. okay they crash workflow like is essential twenty minutes huh. Workflow is essential. Yeah, so that you know, just you know, keep that workflow going, and also no ones that ones that achieve with the sound you're looking for, and pretty fast, and 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 what ones that you know that are, that are really kind of uh, you know um, you know they're not rickety. 
and they're not, you know, they're not, you know, they're not um, too volatile. Because I have a couple of plugins. I'm not going to even mention it, but they're fantastic. A lot of, some of the soft tube ones are, but they just keep blowing up my computer. Every other, I got, I got to keep saving every minute because I know yeah. it's going to crash. <laughs> That's a drag. So I don't use them as much as I would like to. So, um, so you people out there making software, you know, you know, keep it up, but yeah. just remember that, you know, nobody likes buggy stuff. <laughs> yeah, words, words of wisdom. Uh, <laughs> so I think we're we're needing to wrap up a bit. Okay. Um, so do you have any like parting advice for people? Any any? Just follow your dreams. Um, yeah. What I'm trying to say is just you know. Um, just go out, go in there and, you know, have a favorite record you like and try to capture that vibe, capture vibey and, um, and really just have a lot of fun, you know? And like I said, you know, <clears throat> know what you're listening for, <clears throat> have fun and really, you know, check out chat sites like this, check out um, websites where everybody shares information where, you know, you can, you could kind of, you know, communicate because now we're all online here everybody we're online day in day out so get yeah. on some of these chat sites that are really kind of you know you you find the valuable information on it and be surprised uh, you know that people talk and you learn a lot that way and okay if we have a few extra hours and and right now we have only well, we have a few extra hours here um you know check you know this is this is the time to really experiment i'll be honest with you it really is and you know, a lot of those years that I've experienced, you know, that I've worked, you could, you know, you, you know, you could, you can get a lot of great information at home now and just experiment, you know, while you can, because before you know, you got to go back, you got to, you got to, you got to either start working again, or you got to, you know, soon we're yeah. all going to be back to where we were and, and we're wishing kind of, we could just stay at home again. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, know, eat pizza. It's, I definitely feel the same I, like, you know, we're doing music usually to escape from like rules and bosses and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So don't make up a bunch of rules for yourself while you're there, like arbitrary rules. There's no point. Just kind of like see where the day takes you, you know, have fun, put things together that shouldn't necessarily go together. See what happens. No one, nothing's going to explode. Nothing's going to blow up. No one's going to get hurt. And then, That's great. And that's great. And, yeah. and use companies like Lander, you know, and, and, you know, and try different software, you know, plugins, especially, you know, if you're not in any mainstream area or you, you're not, you don't have access to any mastering equipment or anything, just, you know, flip a few files and get something back and then you see how that, you know, works out for you. And, 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 and the good, you know, the good part about a lot of that stuff is it's instant, you know, I mean, I wish I had that in my when I, when I was starting out, you know, instantification. Yeah, it's, kind of, yeah, it's just like a, a kind of a feedback loop. Yeah, like. it's great. And, you know, uh, and, and it, it's all good. And that's why, you know, uh, you know, trust, you know, you know, trust the pros, but also, you know, trust, you know, trust your ears. Very yeah, important. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So I think awesome, man. Anything else we're missing out on? Uh, uh, you know, no. You can see my, that's my kitchen and. Tony, we didn't get down there because I'm. No, we didn't get down there, but everyone, you can see uh, a small fraction of the gold and platinum records uh, <laughs> hanging on the wall. It's uh, you not your average kitchen wallpaper or decor. Yeah, you can see the vision of the studio here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, man, that's gorgeous. That's gorgeous. It's very nice. And I have different Pro Tools rigs. I have Pyramix rigs here. I have everything, you know. It's good. I mean, I'm a lucky guy, but uh, like I said, um, you know, um, you know, um, it's really, it's, it's, you know, I'm only as good as whatever's, you know, whatever the client gives me, whatever, whatever you make, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and that's it. And, and um, I think we're good for now. I think so. And well, thank, thanks so much, Howie. This was. Okay. And, and any other questions, just, you know, feel free to, um, you know, uh, you know, you can contact Lander or you can contact Al. Yeah, there. put them in the comments below and uh, we'll pass them on for sure. All right, thanks so much. And, All right, guys, and like thanks said, for watching. You. Stay All safe. Right, Wash your right. hands. <laughs> Bye.